Hello everyone, this is Javid here in this beautiful park in London and what I want to talk about today is the book titled The Power of Habit, What We Do, Why We Do and How to Change It by Charles Duhigg. This is actually one of those books that has influenced my life massively and helped me to become the person I am today. So I wanted to share with you some of the most important lessons that I've learned from this book. So let's start with what is habits and how habits are created. Habits are actually part of our brain's activities in order to help sustain the energy and efficiency of our daily activities because once habits are acquired, our brains do not need to engage in self-analysis tasks while undertaking a certain routine. Therefore, the process of making a certain routine, certain task automatic is what we call the habit formation. Now habits can be divided into two types, the good habits and bad habits. The good habits such as reading a book a day, waking up early in the morning, going to gym every day can help and increase our daily productivity and help our lives while others can destroy our lives by decreasing the productivity of our daily activities such as smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol, eating fast food and constant procrastination and many others. Three primary factors are the reason for the habit creation, what Duhi calls the habit loop. The habit loop consists of the cue, the routine and the reward. The cue is the trigger that tells your brain to go automatic in which the habit, certain habits deploy. Next is the routine which can be physical, it can be emotional and it can be mental. And the lastly, the reward which helps your brain to figure out if a particular loop is worth remembering for the future. Over time, as this habit cue, routine and the reward, it becomes more and more automatic, creating a certain sense of anticipation, what we call the craving. Eventually, a habit comes forth and your brain stops thinking, stops working so hard. Craving fits the habit loop and habits create certain neurological cravings as we associate for the rewards as the craving emerges in this habit loop. Craving follows two-step process. First, the brain identifies a simple and obvious cue and second, the brain anticipates the reward. The habits emerge when you see the cue as the craving it becomes instantaneously. Once the craving exists, you will act automatically whether it's a good habit or bad habit. Therefore, our brains cannot determine uh, something good or bad and breaking bad habits uh, are so difficult. So for example, we can use this, uh, let's say you want to create the habit of waking up early and going to gym or going for a run or training, exercising in the morning. So it's a good idea to have your exercise shoes near your bed and as soon as you wake up, put your exercise shoes on, which is a cue, and then go for running, which is the routine. And then lastly, the reward part, you can, uh, it, can it, it is going to be the endorphins in your blood or the uh, energized, the feeling of energized, or you can bootstrap your brain into this reward by giving you a healthy treat maybe if you want to make this habit, build this habit of exercising after you finish, give yourself simple rewards that you genuinely believe in and then it will bootstrap your brain to continuously do this certain ritual as soon as you see your sports shoes in front of your bed. So for me personally, when I wake up in the morning, I meditate, I do my morning ritual and uh, I put on my desk the most important thing I have to do in that day and that only, uh, which creates, which is a cue for me that I have to do this job. The main thing that I've got from the whole book is that if you're aware of the cue, and the reward and if you just change the ritual or the routine you're undertaking you can actually create new habits and change your old bad habits now there are two ways of getting rid of your old and bad habits first you 
take notice of what cues are that trigger certain negative behavior, certain negative habit, uh, try to avoid it, or another way of effectively getting rid of the bad habits is simply by changing or replacing the routine you are undertaking while keeping the old cue and the old reward the same. And if you give just enough time for that new behavior to absorb and for your brain to associate that same cue and reward with a new healthy habit, you are more likely to effectively build certain new habits. Uh, but in order to be able to do so, your ba brain requires a belief that it can make it. Uh, so, if you're trying to replace a certain bad habit or get rid of certain bad habit, you have to believe that you can do it. Uh, in, in the other hand, on the other hand, the replacement habits only become durable uh, when something else, something more powerful, such as groups or shared experiences, influence that. A community is what that creates a belief. Effective change happens when people come together and help each other, help one another in the change process. For habit to change, you must first believe that you can change it, and second, you must have a support of other people, a community around you. Zuhig explains in his book how major companies such as McDonald's, Procter & Gamble, Starbucks and many others used uh, the habit creation into their advantage in order to market their products in highly competitive economic markets and secure their top places. So, those of you who are interested in marketing or thinking of creating a company, make sure that you find this book and read it because there is a lot of useful information for you guys. The successful companies use Keystone Habit Principle. For instance, morning accountability check-ins to ensure your team members have the necessary tools to overcome obstacles during the day is very effective in managing your organization. The keystone habit and regular conversations become embedded in your organizational culture. This principle can be applied as well to individuals. For instance, the research shown that has shown that simply by initiating an exercise routine, people start eating better, resting better, taking care of themselves better uh, during the day. So, in the morning, if you wake up, try to eat healthy, and by just eating healthy in the morning, you will be more likely to eat healthier during the day. Now, the, uh, another aspect that Durhig calls in the path of creating new habits is the willpower. The willpower is identified in the studies as the single most important factor in the success. The best way to strengthen the willpower is to make habit of it. Willpower is both a learnable skill and the muscle. It gets tired as it works harder, so there is left power to overcome other things. So that's why productivity experts suggest that, recommend that, tackling the hardest tasks at the first half of the day uh, is more advisable, more suggestible. According to the researchers, the willpower is the single biggest correlation with the success. Willpower outpredicts almost everything, whatever it is you want to achieve in your life. That the fact that willpower outpredicts IQ by a factor of two in academic performance is a, a biggest sign for this. Now, you can take two kids, the, the research has shown that you can take two kids, one with higher level of IQ, another one with higher level of willpower. The one with the higher level of willpower is more likely to succeed in academic career better than the one with the higher IQ. So therefore, if you want to succeed in life, start training your willpower now 
uh, by creating a habit of constantly working on you. Therefore, if you want to succeed in the so-called long run, make sure you work on and cultivate your willpower as well. So don't forget to follow the three steps of changing the bad habits and creating new habits is by controlling the cues and controlling the reward by simply slightly changing the ritual or the return and giving enough time for your brain to associate your cue and reward with the new habits follow a healthier and a better lifestyle and don't forget to identify a keystone habit which is the essential catalyst of your positive habits and successful performance which we mentioned in this case is waking up early and going to gym and lastly make sure you practice and strengthen your willpower by constantly working on improving yourself and creating a better version of yourself this is it and and now, if you like my videos, make sure you click that subscribe button. A comment below if you've read this book and want to share your experience with us, your views with us. And stay tuned for the next videos. Thank you very much.